Okay, so we're nearing the end of the project now. We have pretty much most of the code written at this point. The last thing we need to take care of now is the the deflection of the region of our beam to the left of support A. So we've dealt with everything to the right of support A. And now we've got to deal with that overhang to the left, if indeed there is an overhang to the left uh, of support A. And in our case, there is. So that's what we're going to deal with in, in this video. So you can see I've given myself uh, another heading here, solve for displacement to the left of support A if required, because obviously not all beams are going to have an overhang to the left of the left hand support. So uh, we're going to write some code in here. Now our approach to this is um, pretty much the exact same right as how we calculated the deflection to the right of support A. So if you think about what we did then, we essentially stepped from support A, we stepped to the right and we integrated essentially to the right. So we went through successive values of moment to the right of support A, step by step by step by step. Now, what we're going to do here is do the exact same thing, except we're going to start at support A and we're going to integrate to the left. So we're going to step to the left and we're going to deal with moment values to the left one by one by one by one. Now, the nice thing is we have already solved for the rotation at support A, right? In other words, if you think about it, we've solved for the rotation of the beam immediately to the right of support A. Now, if the beam rotates at support A. Well then, if we know the rotation of the beam immediately to the right of support A, we've worked that out, well then we straight away know what the rotation is to the left of support A. And so our initial guess for the rotation to the left of support A is going to be the, the correct value. We've already solved for it. So it's going to be a relatively straightforward process now of just stepping to the left moment value by moment value all the way to the end to solve for our displacement. Now, I'll, I'll kind of warn you ahead of time that it, it can be a little bit tricky because we're used to dealing with values um, of i and i minus one. Now, because we're stepping to the left rather than to the right, there is potential or scope to get confused uh, with your index values. And so all I'll say is, if this confuses you, the logic of what we're doing is the exact same as we did previously. So just take your time with it and maybe watch it a couple of times and, and go through the code yourself. And actually what I find is very helpful is to have a piece of paper, pen and paper beside you as you're as you're watching this and uh, and follow what it is I'm doing and try and sort of step by step see exactly why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Okay, so enough said. It's not actually that difficult. Um, we'll just get stuck into it now. So the first thing I need to do here is I need to test if there is actually anything to the left of support A, right? Because we only want to execute the following code if I have something to the left of support A. So in order, in other words, all I'm going to say is if A is not equal to zero, remember A was the distance from the left hand of the beam into the first support. Uh, and if that if that isn't equal to zero, it means we have an overhang, okay? But if it is equal to zero, we can basically ignore everything that we're about to write. Okay, so now, uh, once we're in here, let's just, for the purposes of demonstration, let's uh, have a little print statement here that just says there is an overhang to the left of support A. So there is an overhang on the left side, so solve for deflection by integrating in the reverse direction. Okay, that just means to the left because up until now we've been integrating to the right. All right, so the, the logic is the, is the very same. We're gonna start off by basically defining theta underscore i m one for i minus one. Now what's that going to be? That's just going to be the negative of whatever the initial, the solved initial rotation was, right? So this is just the equivalent rotation on the other side of support A, and that's where the negative comes in, right? So it's gonna be solved init rotation. Now we know that that's actually the correct value because we've solved for it already. And we're going to have the vertical deflection at support A and again, V, I, M, one. Now that's equal to zero. I, I'm setting it equal to zero. I could equally, I could either say it's equal to zero or it's equal to initial deflections, wherever you fancy yourself. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to generate a range of index values. That's gonna take me from the index, right? The index at support A, remember that was called support index A. It's gonna take me from that number back to zero. So I'm counting backwards from the index support index A. So let's just call this, let's just call this reverse range, right? Reverse range, and that's gonna to equal to 
np.a range, generating a range of numbers using numpy, and what's it going to be? It's going to start at, it's going to start at support index a, right, minus one. Right, it's going to start there. It's going to move in steps of minus one down to zero. Now, if I wanted to stop at zero, I need to provide one number beyond where I wanted to stop. So it's going to be minus one. So that's going to give me a range of numbers from support index A all the way back down to zero. All right, so again, we're generating a range of indices in the reverse direction from support A to the left edge of the beam. So now that we have that, we can start looping through that reverse range and start doing our numerical integration. So we're going to loop through the data and integrate using the trapezoid rule, just like we did before, but we're just going to go in the opposite direction. So let's start off by saying for i in reverse range, right? So for each of these index values, now this is where it can get slightly confusing. So you have to just sort of co go with me step by step here, right? So what is, what is i underscore i minus one, right? Well, what is that? Well, that's going to be the moment value located, located at i plus one, because remember we're reversing our direction now, okay? Uh, that would make m underscore i equal to m i remember we're looping through the reverse range of values here right so i minus one this would be for example let's just imagine that was 300 if that was 300 that would make this 299 so you're going in the reverse direction and so your i values are getting smaller as you progress now that's the hard part right once you've got that nailed down the rest is is pretty straightforward that is literally the hardest part of what we're about to do uh, or what we're doing in this lecture assigning these values once you understand this well then it's plain sailing so we're stepping our way towards the left end of the beam. Now we can go ahead in the usual way and calculate M average, and this should be the exact same as we had previously. So 0.5 times M underscore I plus M underscore I minus one. And we can go ahead and calculate theta I and V I. And in fact, let me go up and copy this from above. So let me reveal this code here and copy this I can also let me see I won't copy I won't copy that because we're gonna to have to make a change to that so let's come down here we've got theta theta I and V I and now we're going to store data again now in fact yeah let's come in here let's copy this and just be very careful that when we come down we're storing these values not in IND this makes no sense anymore uh, instead we want to store in I so the rotation at I and the deflection at I remember I was one of the values from reverse range uh, so we're storing the the rotation and deflection we've just calculated and then we got to update the values for the next run through so let's just copy this and fix our indenting and that should be it that should be it okay so again you can see this code here is almost identical to this code here the only difference is in these two well it's in these two lines but also in the index that's used to store these values the main logical change here is that we are now going in the reverse direction so i minus one is actually going to be the value from within the the range of um, moment values but it's going to be um if this was let's say 1000 right well then this will be 999 and then the next time we come through this one's going to be 999 and this one's going to be 998 so again we're stepping in that reverse direction i don't want to over labor the point but it's important you you understand that so let's just uh let's just run this now and see let's see if we have any errors okay so we don't have any errors that we know about so there's an overhang overhand that should say overhang there's an overhang on the left side and so we solve for the deflection by integrating in the reverse direction so now we should have we should have deflection and, and rotation if we wanted it but we should have a range of deflection values all the way across our beam so starting at support a all the values of deflection to the right which we think we did those first and then Again, going back to support A and calculating all the deflection values to the left. And so now, well not now, in the next video we can come back and we can actually, in a, in a quick operation, we can go and print that deflection uh, and visualize our deflected shape. Right, so we're going to come back and pick that one up in the next video.